Um, it's my great pleasure to welcome Chris Whitty to chair the next session. He is the Chief Scientific Advisor at the UK uh, Department for International Development and a professor at the uh, London School. So thank you very much, Chris. Um, so I, I, I'll crack straight in because I think what people want is to listen to the talks and to the, um, to the questions and answers afterwards, except just to say that uh, Jeremy and I went to the same neurology uh, training uh, session. <laughs> uh, so if you, want, if you want your friends to go into international health, encourage them to do neurology. Um, <laughs> The first, so there, we're going to have three really important talks here. Mal malaria ha is at a crossroads. There have been enormous improvements over the last five years uh, and building on quite a lot of improvements over the last 15 years. Uh, but the, we've now got some new tools and also some very significant new challenges. And the uh, three talks we've got today address three of those. So uh, it's a really great pleasure to be chairing this. I've always enjoyed this, uh, this meeting very much. Welcome in particular to the people who are watching online. I'd like, I'd like to ask Elena Koskalova to come up. Uh, Elena is a clinician and epidemiologist. She's worked with MSF since 1999 uh, and did her master's at the school. Um, and she's going to be talking about seasonal malaria uh, chemo prevention, chemo prophylaxis. Thank you. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to present uh, some results of our work uh, on seasonal malaria chemo prevention in Niger. But I would like to confess in the beginning that it's really an important pressure like to, to present after such a great speak, uh, speech, and especially for a non-English speaker. So I would like to, <laughs> to address um, uh, also to all the non-English speaker because I think it's really difficult for us. <laughs> so. So briefly, the seasonal malaria chemo prevention is a strategy that aims to prevent malaria episodes. And it's recommended to be implemented in the places where malaria transmission is highly seasonal, with the most of the cases concentrated within a very short period uh, of time. And the SMC consists of administrating intermittently a full antimalarial treatment with sulfaraxin pyrimetamine and amodiakin, which is actually given for three days to children between three and 59 uh, uh, months at monthly interval for a maximum of four treatment rounds per year. Uh, it's also, uh, the studies uh, really demonstrated an important impact of SMC uh, that can reduce more than 75% of malaria episodes both, uh, both simple and uh, severe. So why MSF did decide to, to implement SMC in Niger? Firstly, because malaria is the most important cause of uh, morbidity and mortality in Niger. Secondly, uh, because the malaria transmission is highly seasonal in Niger. But most importantly, it is because Niger is really facing this double peak of uh, acute uh, severe malnutrition and malaria that is happening at the same time and is resulting in an important increase of morbidity and mortality every year, which is creating uh, a tremendous pressure on hospitalization services. So since 2013, actually all uh, four MSF sections present in Niger started to implement uh, SMC in its project areas, targeting more than 400,000 children in 2014. Uh, sulfuroxin pyrimetamine and amodiakin is used in a cobrister form, which really makes easier the distribution compared to using a loose, uh, loose tablets. And it's organized through the campaigns, uh, either through the fixed distribution sites or through the using the door-to-door -door, uh, teams. Uh, in Niger, uh, it was decided to uh, organize four distribution rounds between July and October, and the first dose is given at the site, and the two other doses are given by mothers uh, at home. Our experience from two years is very, very positive. So actually, the, the population uh, adhere very well to the strategy. Uh, it's very well accepted. The, the coverage is very high, and it was shown that adherence to three days strategy is very good. However, we realized that demonstrating, uh, demonstrating an impact using uh, programmative data is quite challenging. So what we decided to do, actually, as I mentioned, the, the impact of SMC was well documented. So we didn't want to, 
invest in heavy research demonstrating an impact uh, of SMC in Niger. But at the same time, we have to say that actually giving these awfully tasting tablets to the children, especially to the small one, is extremely challenging. And somehow we want to monitor uh, the effectiveness of the SMC. So we decided actually to estimate the effectiveness of SMC in Magaria district globally and per each SMC round. And then also actually to evaluate how this effectiveness change uh, depending on time that elapsed since the last SMC distribution. So we decided to be very simple, and we selected four uh, Sentinel sites, which were actually health structures that MSF was uh, supported. And we uh, set up during the SMC period an individual data collection on all fever cases in children under five years old. Then we also conducted uh, population-based um, cross-sectional coverage survey after the end of the SMC. And then actually we decided to use a very simple method that it's uh, used uh, for, uh, to estimate the vaccine effectiveness. The method is used as screening method or rapid estimation method. And in this method, we consider the proportion of cases that has been vaccinated and proportion of population that has been vaccinated. When apply this to the uh, SMC effectiveness, actually, uh, we consider the proportion of malaria cases that received the last SMC, and this is taken from the individual data collection uh, in the Sentinel sites, and then actually the proportion of po population that received SMC, which is actually taken from the coverage uh, surveys. So uh, we then uh, follow up the malaria episodes that were defined as, as fever and uh, positive rap rapid diagnostic test. Uh, what is important to mention here is that we used uh, uh, the test that it's based on detection on histidine-rich protein 2 antigen. Uh, during the analysis period that went from the first day after the first distribution till the 20th day after the fourth distribution, we had in total more than 4,500 um, uh, fever cases, and in this, more than 3,000 uh, tested positive with RT for malaria, which is 66%. But importantly, you have to see an important increase of uh, positive RDTs going from 23% up to the 84% for the four distribution round. Ah. So then how we uh, apply the equation for, uh, for the SMC, uh, SMC uh, effectiveness. So we first calculated the proportion of malaria cases that received uh, the, the last SMC, which was globally 79% and, and varied between 41 and 87%. And then from the survey, we took the, uh, the, the, the coverage uh, of SMC, which was actually very high, and varied between 85 85%. 85% and 94%. Then using the equation, we globally estimated the SMC effectiveness being 63%, but you can see actually how the uh, SMC effectiveness decreased from the first uh, to the fourth round from 94% to the 16%. And you can see this also graphically, so very high eff effectiveness during the, after the first round, but very low effectiveness after the fourth round. Then we also stratify the analysis uh, on the time elapsed since the last SMC distribution. So you see that actually the trend is the same, so it's a decreasing effectiveness from the first to the fourth round, but with quite important difference for the first 21 days since, since the last distribution, and for the last seven days, uh, before the next distribution with practically no uh, effectiveness during the third and fourth round. So what we can uh, conclude with this? First, we think that, that the method, the simple method we use, it's, it proved really practical to evaluate SMC effectiveness. Then uh, also actually we suggest that SMC is effective because the 60, global 63% we think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good result of uh, SMC effectiveness, but this protective effect seems to wane through the distribution round. We think actually that there might be several distribution to these results that we observed. So the first one might be the increase in exposure uh, to malaria over time, but very importantly we think that it's really the use of the HRP2 test that might remain positive weeks after 
after the parasite clearance, and we don't have data on, on resistance to SPNIAQ, uh, so we cannot exclude uh, that this is cont contributing as well, even though we think that actually this is, uh, this is uh, uh, not uh, very probable. Concerning the limitations, uh, of course, there is a problem of representativeness of the four sentinel sites. The biggest constraint is really the use of H HIP HRP2 test giving a false positive result, especially during the highest malaria transmission season. Then also, we only had the global SMC estimates, which might not correspond to, uh, to the coverage in the, SM, uh, in, the, in the Sentinel sites. And also, we didn't account on the potential differences between children that received and did not receive SMC. And then it's a simple monitoring. So accuracy of the data in simple monitoring need to be always questioned. On the recommendation side, we think that as, as, as we see that SMC effectiveness decreased during the last day, seven days of each cycle, cycle, the narrowing of the interval could be beneficial, at this especially during the malaria peak. So in this context would be probably the uh, narrowing the interval between the third and the fourth SMC distribution. Then we also think that use of other type of tests, so the PLDH test, will definitely improve the interpretation of the results. So it's something that we are going to use hopefully this year on the Sentinel sites. And then of course we need more data from all Sentinel sites, from more, more years, and also the better coverage estimates to improve the generalizability of our results. And um, at the end, we think that this simple method of monitoring SMC could become a part of monitoring evaluation package of SMC activities. So I would like to thank all the MSF staff working on, on SMC, Minister of Health for the contribution, but, but really, really most importantly, all the mothers that brought and that did great effort to bring the children uh, to the SMC. And thank all of you for listening. That was an excellent talk. You're, you're escaping before you're allowed. You, I'm going to allow one question. We, we started a little bit late. Um, as long as it's short and to the point. Uh, there's a gentleman up at the top there. Hello, I'm Tom from Imperial College. Um, what was your seasonality profile of episodes in um, Niger before you introduced SMC? So could just not your variability and effectiveness be differences in seasonality? Mm, I don't, uh, I'm not sure if I understood well the question, but the seasonality, it's like most of the cases, is uh, concentrated within the four months. The problem of this year was that the season started a little bit late. So it means actually the SMC started sooner, so it would be more effective probably if the distribution started two, three weeks later. Great. Thank you very much indeed. Mm.